Hey there, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. Do you want to learn how hot a catalytic converter can get? In this video, we'll discuss what temperature can be expected on the surface of the catalytic converter. But before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, and share this video. A catalytic converter is a bulky metallic pack fixed at the base of a vehicle with dual ducts emanating from it. One duct represents the converter's input, which is linked to the motor and transported in scorching, grimy smoke from the motor's cylinders. The gas needed to run the car combusts and generates energy in the machine cylinders. The other duct is the converter's output, which is fitted to the channel pipe. As the gases from the motor billows over the catalytic converter, Chemical reactions cause the gases to break down the contaminant gases and alter them into gases that are safer to be blandly let loose into the air. Catalytic converters carry out duties properly with unleaded gas since the lead in usual gas is toxic to the catalyst and hinders it from sucking the impurities in vent fumes. How hot does a catalytic converter get? Catalytic converters typically overheat because they are running unrelenting to burn off more noxious waste from the smokestack than they're possibly intended to process. A worn or congested catalytic converter can go from its standard working temperature range of about 1200 to 1, 6000 F, 648.9 to 871.10 C, to about 2,000 F, 1,093.30 C. It is vital to note that overheating catalytic converters are a blaze hazard that is mostly disregarded. The exhaust system is one of the most scorching gears of your automobile that runs the complete length of the automobile. This means if the machine isn't running proficiently because of a fault, it doesn't burn the gas accurately, and a number of other things end in the shaft arrangement. The catalytic converter is forced to exert additional energy to perform its work, making it hotter than it should be. This additional workload leads to a lasting break of the catalytic converter and other adjoining components affected by the hotness. Every automobile is designed to bear up to the typical hotness of the catalytic converter. Nevertheless, it sure would be unable to survive when the catalytic converter temperature rises to several hundred degrees. If the catalytic converter gets extremely hot, it could even set fire to the cabin insulation and carpeting. What temperature can be expected on the surface of the catalytic converter? Temperature sensors are regularly used as a caution system on dual-way catalytic converters. The sensor is strictly cautious when the hotness of the catalytic converter hotness rises far above the limit that is considered safe, which is 750 degrees Celsius, 1380 degrees Fahrenheit. Newer makes of the catalytic converter aren't as prone to high temperature damage and can resist constant temperatures of 900 degrees Celsius, 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. Use your temp gun to check when your car runs for about 30 minutes. The hotness of the back should be at least 75 degrees hotter than the front. If the front is hotter than the back, then it means the catalytic converter is controlled. For the regular range, immediately after your vehicle is warmed up, the temperature on the surface of the catalytic converter should be like 275 front and 375 to 400 back. If the surface of the catalytic converter is under 250, it means your car isn't warmed up sufficiently, and if the temperature reads about 550 front and 650 back, it points to a fault. At what temperature is the catalytic converter fully effective? The purpose of the sensor is to warn if the catalytic converter's hotness rises above the safe limit of 750 degrees Celsius, 1380 degrees Fahrenheit. Current catalytic converter designs are not as inclined to temperature damage and can bear up to unrelenting hotness of 900 degrees Celsius, 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. Catalytic converters are fixed with the sole purpose of cutting down air pollution. Catalytic converters are valuable at reducing discharges but not getting rid of them. The issue with catalytic converters is that they function best at temperatures of approximately over 300 degrees Celsius slash 600 degrees Fahrenheit when the mechanism has warmed up. In older models, catalytic converters usually take about 10 to 15 minutes to heat up, so they were utterly unproductive for the first few kilometers of a journey. However, it takes a mere 2 to 3 minutes to warm up in modern vehicles. Though massive discharges can still occur during this period, it is far better than the early models. Carbon dioxide isn't completely safe, even in minute concentrations, since it is mainly the cause of global warming and climate change. Catalytic converters may even exacerbate climatic changes since they convert carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. In the real sense, 
a catalytic converter may not be effective since the carbon monoxide emitted by automobiles would ultimately change to carbon dioxide in the air. It is only effective at trimming down the carbon monoxide a car releases into the air while in motion. In other words, it only improves the air quality of immediate surroundings. Auto experts have noted that catalytic converters may convert nitrogen oxides to nitrogen and oxygen, they emit little quantity of nitrous oxide by so doing, which is over 300 times stronger than carbon dioxide. Now, with loads of automobiles on the road daily, even minute amounts of nitrous oxide could accumulate and pose major catastrophe. However, the latest models of catalytic converters generate considerably less nitrous oxide than the outdated models. Though catalytic converters help control short-term air pollution, there are apprehensions that it aggravates the long-term climate change problem. What is safe catalytic converter temperature? The standard light-off temperature at which the catalytic converter starts to work ranges from 400 to 6000 F. The typical working temperature varies from 1200 to 1, 6000 F. Conversely, as the sum of toxins in the tailpipe increases, the operating heat also increases. The converter doesn't have to work extremely hard to perform its tasks. If the motor is with ideal compression, isn't consuming oil down valve guides, and the ignition and engine managing system are all functioning appropriately, there should be comparatively little HC and CO in the tailpipe for the converter to burn. In earlier engine models with multi-point gas injection, combustion is so uncontaminated that the converter has little to do. The variation connecting the inlet and outlet hotness may only be 300 F at 2500 revolutions per minute. At rest mode, the converter in an older automobile may cool off so much that there's nearly no quantifiable distinction in front and rear temperatures. Consequently, examining the exhaust temperatures earlier than in following the converter at idle and 2500 revolutions per minute isn't a precise modus operandi to establish if the converter is working appropriately. However, temperature measurements indicate if the converter is running extremely hard. A temperature probe helps to signify if the converter is operating hazardously hot. If the converter vent hotness is 2000 F or higher than the inlet heat, it signifies loads of CO in the smoke duct that calls for combustion. A gas fusion will emit hydrogen sulfide in the smokestack, which smells like rotten eggs. Elementary faults may include blocked PCV valves or extreme gas pressure. A broken air pump system can also trigger high CO levels in the tailpipe. If the outlet temperature is 5000 F hotter than the inlet, it points to gas in the shaft that hasn't combusted. The potential cause would be ignition misfire, defective spark plug, shorted or open plug wire, broken distributor cap, arcing rotor, or a compression leak. A general external sign of overheating to watch out for is a discolored or distorted converter shell. Conclusion on how hot should a catalytic converter get? Catalytic converters cannot just stop working for no cause. There is frequently a causal factor that has to be identified and rectified. Catalytic converters are one of the best discharge accompaniments to be mounted on vehicles. They help reduce hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide release to the minimum by cleaning the toxins left over from combustion. However, in cases where the automobile isn't running normally, it would affect the machine's performance and may fail an emissions test. High levels of HC and CO tailpipe discharges are frequently symptoms of a ruined catalytic converter. A polluted converter may not lead to an increase in back pressure. Catalytic converters aren't supposed to function too hard under ideal working conditions. Temperature measurements indicate if the converter is operating excessively hard. You can use a temperature probe to check if the converter is working abnormally hot. If the converter outlet hotness is 2000 F higher than the inlet temperature, it has lots of unburned CO in the exhaust system. If the outlet temperature is a lot hotter than 5000 F than the inlet temperature, it indicates unburned gas in the smokestack. If the catalytic converter is damaged or corroded, it has to be changed. Also, if the OBD2 system indicates low catalyst efficiency, the converter must be changed. Changing the old catalytic converter for a new one will reinstate proper emissions. Note that even after replacing the catalytic converter, it may experience the same problem as the old one if the causal condition isn't rectified. I hope this video has helped you see how hot a catalytic converter gets and what temperature can be expected on the surface of the catalytic converter. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.